Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Swindon, England. Today we got yet another great tool by Didier that he released, Isodump. Isodump will help you analyze malicious ISO files. We're looking at a couple of them over the last few months in various diaries. So Didier finally got around to create a tool to automate a good part of these tasks. Now, after yesterday's patch by Atlassian for a Jira vulnerability, we today have more details regarding an unrelated vulnerability in the Atlassian Crowd product. This was also a remote code execution vulnerability that was based on the PDK install development plugin. In a blog post by Corbin Leo, there are more details regarding the exact bug being addressed in this update and how it could possibly be exploited, including proof of concept code to exploit the vulnerability. I think this is a good reminder to double check if all of your Atlassian products are properly patched. There were a number of vulnerabilities over the last few months that were patched in these products and some of the older ones are certainly already being exploited. And in case you are writing spiders using the Scrapey framework, which is a quick uh, Python framework that allows you to automate the scraping of websites, well, uh, better be aware of some issues with this particular tool that I don't think have fully been addressed by the Scrapey team yet. In a blog post by Claudio Salazar, he's going over some of these issues that really sort of center around kind of two basic problems. One is where Scrapey may escape from the scope it was provided with. And the second problem is that Scrapey may be tricked as a result into reading file URLs, which of course are local on the machine that runs Scrapey. File URLs are in general a problem and really have sort of odd security implications because they also allow web browsers to read local files, which has been abused in the past. In this case, the browser, well, is the tool running on a system spidering a website. So the website being spidered could potentially now reach out to the host that's running Scrapey and read files. Typically, this problem is supposed to be sufficiently covered by just setting an appropriate scope for the spider. We basically tell the spider to only cover a certain domain or hostname or even directory. But the problem appears to be that redirects can be used to escape this scope and direct Scrapey to other URLs outside its scope, including file URLs. And Trend Micro has a fairly detailed blog post on some of the dangers of URL schemes in iOS. Now, a URL scheme is basically a URL, but instead of the standard protocols like HTTP and HTTPS, a developer can choose a custom protocol identify essentially, and that's considered the URL scheme. Now, first problem here, of course, there is no central registrar for these URL schemes. So different vendors, different pieces of software may use the same URL scheme. In iOS, if you have two applications that try to register that same URL scheme for themselves, well, only the first application will be successful and future applications will not be allowed to register, which of course will prevent, for example, later impersonating applications to overwrite the URL scheme registered by the first one. Now, further on, once you click on a URL that starts with one of these custom schemes, and one example would be FaceTime, so FaceTime colon slash slash, it will open up FaceTime, it will ask the user for permission 
to open FaceTime, but then the remainder of the URL is just passed to the software, like FaceTime. The problem here is what if the application isn't accurately verifying the data or the source of the data? So for example, Trend Micro is talking here about a problem with the WeChat application. Some applications allow you to log in with WeChat. The problem here is that these applications then have a setup static URL with WeChat. So you click on a link in the application that starts with WeChat. This redirects you to WeChat, which well then will ask you for your credentials and redirect you back to the application you came from with a token. Since WeChat does not actually verify the origin of the data beyond this custom URL, any application now could use this WeChat feature to retrieve authentication tokens for, from WeChat that would work with any other application that is registered with WeChat. So these are some of these subtle issues that Trend Micro is talking about. They have notified vendors uh, quite a while ago, I think over a year ago, some of these vendors and bugs should be addressed. But if you're using these iOS URL schemes in your own applications, you probably want to double check that you got it all done right. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.